Good afternoon, as per panel members, uh, our student presenters and uh, honored attendees. Um, welcome to venue B uh, of the first afternoon section. My name is Jenny Guan and will be served as uh, the faculty moderator during this section. Uh, first of all, I would like to announce that this section is being live broadcast, uh, which explains the presence of the camera here. So uh, could you please uh, be sh sure that your mobile phone has been switched to the silent mode? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, this section, during this section, we will have three student presenters and Everyone will deliver 15 minutes summary of their research findings and followed by five minutes uh, comments and questions from our uh, expert panel. And at the end of this section, uh, we will call upon all of our presenters and their uh, expert panel members to take a group photo together and as well as present the souvenirs and the certificate to our uh, students and uh, as per panel members. Thank you very much. Um, now it's my pleasure to begin our session by introducing our three expert panel members. Uh, Mr. Alan Cook, Executive Assistant Manager, Grand Emperor Hotel. <laughs> Ms. Joyce Wong, Director Training, Learning, Academic, Melco Results and Entertainment. Mr. Gonzalo Montero, uh, Vice President of Hotel Operations, London Ascent China Limited. Okay. Thank you for joining this section. Okay. Um, the first presenter this afternoon is Ms. Yolanda Wu. Okay. Yes, Ms. Yolanda, are you ready? Yeah, okay, let's start, thank you. Testing, testing. Okay, so uh, good afternoon everyone. I'm Linda. Uh, today I'm so honored to be here to presenting my thesis to you guys. So as you can see, the topic of my thesis is, is about sexual harassment and sexual harassment reporting in the Macau hospitality industry, as well as uh, ex uh, examination of these two areas of people with different sexual orientation. So, this is the agenda of my presentation, beginning with some problem identification, move to methodology and key findings, and finally end up with some practical suggestions. So, uh, firstly, what is sexual harassment? Imagine this kind of situation. You sit in your office and your boss or your colleagues comes to you and start touch your shoulder, your face, or your any body parts, and you feel uncomfortable, then yeah, without doubt, that is sexual harassment. But what about date? A continual invitation of dating with you, though you don't really want to. What about a wink? A person just passed by you and winked to you. Could it be sexual har har harassment? Well, the definition of sexual harassment is actually much broader. So if we just talk about in the workplace, so through promising rewards, such as a higher, a higher salary, a job promotion, or through threatening, like layoff, and any physical or verbal conduct, as long as the receiver feels uncomfortable or offensive, they could all be defined as sexual harassment, which is to say from rape to dirty jokes, even to eye contact, they could all be regarded as sexual harassment. So um, this kind of crime happened in all kinds of environments, like public transport, people commonly aware of it, to the hospital, to a school, but for the workplace, study shows that the hospitality industry is one of the most victimized workplace of sexual harassment. And it is primarily due to the industry nature, which is suffering, means providing services means a close interaction between customer employees and their coworkers. So compliance 
is one of the necessity of this industry. Uh, this kind of feature creates a strong breeding ground to, um, to it happen. And it has been damaged the image of this whole industry working environment all the time. And this kind of crime happened to all, all kinds of people within the industry, regardless of their age, educational level, or gender. And one particular group of people that we talk about is for the, the, four, the four common character that people uh, commonly know is LGBT community. But so far, to be more accurate, it could be defined as LGBTQIA plus community. And it stands for the um, individuals it is displayed on screen. And study shows that there is a high level of discrimination, particular against less group of people, just because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. And then there is a possible, there's possibility for them to suffering from sexual harassment even higher than other employees. So um, try to address uh, this identified problem. The study used a, a framework so-called as theory of plant behavior. As the um, diagram shows here, uh, the model. So basically it means that humans behavior will be, could be predicted by three independent factors, namely our attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavior control, which is to say, let's say if, if right now I want to put out my mask, then um, if I got a strong or favorable attitude towards it, or other people around me are support me to do that, plus I'm uh, comfortable, I'm, I'm uh, confident, and I might perceive my own behavior to take out with my mask is strong enough. I'll add them together. It will lead to a strong intention to towards behavior, and finally, this behavior will conduct it. So by applying this kind of uh, model. We, try, we study try to answer the questions displayed on screen. Firstly, how widespread is sexual harassment? And what's the state of reporting it in the Macau hospita hospitality industry? And secondly, what are the difference between the employees with different sexual orientation towards these two areas? And lastly, what are the drivers and barriers behind reporting or not reporting it? So, uh, this is the, the methodology that study adapt as its expository study used quantitative method. And basically we issued an online questionnaire by snowball sampling to the people who are currently working or have ever been working in the Macau hospita hospitality industry. And the question uh, was designed as um, some are really dark to ask, like, have you ever been sexually harassed? And some uh, ask about, about the attitude um, uh, people around them without their opinion and um, the way confidence to conduct this kind of behavior and so on. So in the end, uh, the questionnaire collect totally 240 responses with 303, 303 valued uh, respondents. This is, so this is the social demographic of the respondents. So uh, nearly half of them are from Macau. 40% uh, of them from mainland China, and there are totally 15% of them from are belong to the LGBTQIA plus employees, and particularly for this group of people, 70% uh, uh, of them are from Macau, rest of them are from mainland China, and majority of them are working in a non-management position like uh, operation. And then uh, after um, analyzing the data collected, let's two diagrams summarize some key findings. As we can see, for male, female, LGBTQIA+, and heterosexual employees, there are the possibility for all of them to experience sexual harassment. And, but for overall speaking, the happening rate is around 30, 34%. However, the reporting rate just around 5%. And it is noticed that for LGBTQIA uh, community employees, the happening rate could even uh, higher up to the 70 percentage. And also, it's interestingly to notice that for male, even though they are experiencing less sexual harassment experience than female, but they report more than them. And after uh, using the SPSS doing analysis on the computer, the, re the result shows that 
subject norms and perceived behavior control over uh, over reporting can indeed influence the reporting intention significantly. So uh, this is a summary of the key finding of the study. Firstly, for the Macau hospitality industry, the sexual harassment it happened um, uh, commonly, and people do not really need, wanted to report it. Secondly, there is a strong social stigma, um, specifically towards LGBTQIA plus employees. We are suffering from a more pro, uh, prevalency of sexual harassment than heterosexual employees. And then for the low reporting rate, the reason could be, firstly, uh, their people around them and their uh, social environment are not really support them to do the report. Secondly, um, uh, they perceive their own ability, they're not confident enough to do the reporting behavior. And lastly, however, uh, the result also shows that though people have a strong intention to do the, report, uh, to do the reporting, but it doesn't really lead to the extra reporting behavior. It sounds like a bit tricky. But uh, so the study talked about, discussed, there could be several factors behind of it. Firstly, the victims are fit of various negative outcomes, such as losing their jobs, or be responsible for the punishment of the harasser, or retribution from the harassers. And then um, they commonly believe that though, even though they did the reporting behavior, but the situation won't be any change, means they do not really believe their company whether they can do the justified decision of the investigation or no investigation at all. And lastly, it could also be because of the culture contact, which means that in Asian culture, we all know that a sexual related topic are commonly be regarded as highly sensitive. People are not really willing to or not comfortable to talk about it, so we avoid it. Um, it could be, it could lead to a high power distance and low leader trust in Asian working environment, and it also including hospitality industry. So now uh, we see the problem and the results. What can we do about it? So firstly, from government level, so far the Macau local law only consider physical conduct as sexual harassment. So maybe try to refer to other countries' laws and combine with the local culture to improve the legal protection to a more comprehensive level. On the other hand, for the organizations, for the companies, we'll try to change the organizational climate to zero, intol zero tolerance towards sexual harassment. So stay clear about the policies uh, what steps of the reporting procedures and practices. And it is quite important to build a penalty system, which means that once it happened, the harasser would definitely receive the punishment. It must be guaranteed. And lastly, the training is pretty important. I try to carry more face-to-face -face trainings, grouply or individually, instead of just brochures or booklets because it is one of the most effective way to deliver the message to your employees. Because the problem could be, though uh, your organization have this kind of policy, but employees do not aware of it, or, know, or, or though they know about it, but they are not confident, or they are not really believe it. So the training is pretty important. And at the end, um, I want to see that this research topic is not really direct link to the economic or uh, revenue part of the industry. But just despite all the uh, psychological or physical harm it could, it could be caused, what kind of employees would like to re working really hard in a position that they, they are receive harassment, but there, there is no way to speak it out. So in a long term speaking, it's still critical to build a system to help them, to, to let them feel safe to express their voice in case it happened. Because the fact is that it did happen. It happened all the time to all kinds of people. And it happened to maybe your family, your friends, it happened to you and me. So yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Yolanda. The topic is very interesting and the presentation is impressive. And now I would like to uh, open the section uh, for questions and comments from our distinguished 
uh, panel members. Thank you very much, Professor Jenny. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Yolanda, for like uh, what Professor Jenny has mentioned is a very interesting topic. And I must say that you have chosen a very brave topic because I'm sure uh, through your uh, research on this topic, it is also very difficult to um, get collect the data, but I can see that you do have a lot of responses on this as well. Uh, and thanks for sharing, especially on your key findings. Uh, I think this is definitely very valuable, especially for organizations. Uh, this is something that uh, each organization uh, would definitely will need to look into and see how uh, we can provide an environment for the colleagues to be able to express that. So uh, I would like to ask a question which is related to when you mentioned about the finding about um, the relationship between um, the intention, the, the intention to report, however, is doesn't correlate to the behavior to report, right? So, uh, which we can see that it is definitely under-reporting and I'm sure it is happening in the organizations as well. And uh, you have also mentioned about the organization's um, uh, suggestions in regards to making the policy, having the penalty system and also the training, which um, again, I think uh, a lot of companies are doing that as well. Do you have further insights into how we can create a comfortable environment for uh, colleagues who are being uh, suffered uh, in this situation, be able to really uh, report on cases like this. Any insights, if you can share with us? Um, so for the first question about the intention and the final behavior. So um, yeah, what result shows that uh, Actually, the, the response and respondent shows they have strong intention of reporting means because it's a really subjective thing. I think I got strong intention to do it, but I did not do it eventually. This is because this topic is, is a little bit like um, unique because you do not just do it and nothing happened. You consider a lot of consequences, negative consequences I mentioned before. And this consequence will uh, lead to though I have strong intention, I'm suffering, but I I, I don't I, I can't I can't means uh, I'm afraid of the those outcome of outcomes, and for the uh, suggestions parts, um, yeah I mean uh, yeah companies um, does have some like relevant uh, policies about it, and I've asked one of my like colleagues when internship and she said uh, like in her company there's like how how uh, how line of this kind of things, but I don't think it's really enough. And um, because uh, again, in, in Asian culture, people are not really comfortable to talk about, to speak it out, they think it's ugly. So um, the company should uh, maybe should let the employees know uh, it's okay. And not only a hotline, uh, maybe more like practical things, maybe just do a punishment once it happened, because one thing has been done, all the people see it, and next time it happened, then you were brave to, to speak it out. Yeah. Hi, Yolanda, thank you very much. It was, it's again a very controversial subject that you've chosen, but I think it's a good one. I think there is a lot of steps to, to take still from most of the organizations towards a, a good understanding. Um, I just, on, on your presentation itself, or the way you've done it, I think you spoke too quickly. <laughs> uh, so sometimes I got a little bit lost on the presentation itself. Uh, a lot of also numbers passing by and a lot of letters. So if you could just pace yourself, I think it would be better for us on their side. So on that part, um, what you're talking about also people not coming forward and the old culture, absolutely. I don't think it's only Asian culture, it's all the cultures, right? Um, we have now so much social media that people are afraid of the public shame as well. So everyone knows it's always difficult to hide those things. But one of the things that I think you didn't touch as much as I would like to see uh, was one was you talking about, you said in the beginning that hospitality is one of the, the areas that you see more sexual harassment, right? But you did not make the difference between, and I, I didn't see it on your questionnaire, between what is staff and what is guests. Because you have a lot of guests also sexual harassing the staff uh, that happens a lot 
and I did not saw that in between. So I don't know how much of that was guests versus staff. So I don't know if you have that that those numbers. Uh, if you had, it would be actually quite interesting for us to see as well. Unfortunately, uh, study didn't include for the guests. It's only from the employee part. It's only for employee. Okay. So because I didn't saw it on your questionnaire, so I just. So but besides that, I think there is a lot to do, not only by the government, like you said, but also for the um, for the companies as well. Also, mainly if you go to LG, LGDB, that it's even more complicated. Where do they change? Do they have special areas that they change uh, uniforms, etc.? You've seen most of your staff are actually um, um, staff that line staff, so they need to change on their own areas. So we had a few cases in Macau here. I had a few cases in other places I work. It's very complicated to work with, but I think we need to, of course, to move that on that on that forward on that. And make sure we give conditions that people to be happy and to because they're, they're they're as as bad or as good employees as any other. So we need to also to make sure we protect them. So I think thank you for for having the courage to bring it forward. Thank you. Okay, Yolanda, you to me you you are very brave. You choose a very I I would say it's a hot it's a very hot subject, but it's very interesting. At least to me, yes, and. Uh, I have no doubt for your data collection because you, you said you got a 330 respondent rate. Right? And um, um, it's quite balancing because you have a 51% from Macau and 42% 40, from mainland China. And uh, one question is um, when, I, when I saw your report saying that uh, the LGBTQIA, the report is it's quite significantly high, 68%. Have you ever asked them why they, why that particular this this kind of uh, uh, the the people, why the why this, why the figure is significantly high? Um, well, only questionnaire is like no such question about the particular reason about it. But why reading the literature? One thing that I I found is like um, the discrimination toward this group of people. Uh, this one reason is that. Uh, the harassers want to punish them because you are different from me. So uh, no matter for sexual orientation or you know physical appearance, because you are different, so I want to punish you. And the physical or verbal abuse or sexual harassment is part of like a punishment system. That's the philosophy. It's one of the reasons that I noticed in literature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll see because sometimes um, when I when I see the figures, I will say, oh, is it is it related to the People got a, a bit of subjective. I'm not sure because, uh, and do you think they're too quite sensitive? I'm not sure because this one is, there's no good, yes or right, good or bad, right? As long as you report or not report, you think that you are harassing, you are not, it depends. So I will say, I will say, if you keep continue to study, I will say this is a quite another interest topic for you to develop in it, okay. It's very good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for our uh, panel's comments, uh, valuable comments. So uh, for Yolanda's future studies, uh, I think uh, maybe you can uh, involve some, to, to conduct some interviews uh, with uh, related uh, employees to explore further. Uh, and some details. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, our second uh, presenter this afternoon is Miss uh, Shresha. Am I right? The pronounce they see. Okay. Okay. Uh, then uh, please begin your presentation. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sneha, and the topic I'm presenting is negative online review and the management response, the case of the luxury hotel in Macau. And this uh, topic was supervised by Dr. Yvonne Chan. And this is the uh, table of content. So I'm going to go through all of this topic one by one. So first introduction. 
So let's see what is the review first before going to the online review. So review is something we look back, uh, look back to for our memory or just evaluation. So review can be of anything, just little thing. You buy a what bottle of water, you drink it, you don't like it. So that's your review. If you buy a cloth that and you don't like it, that is also a review. You like it, that is also a review. So, and what, how is it different from the online review? So just a traditional review, you talk with some people face to face, that is the traditional review. And for the online review, with the advancement in the technology and with all the uh, internets, there have been many online sites and travel agents where the people can uh, express their feeling without having to talk with the personals, the hotel personals or any personals uh, face to face. So they can freely uh, uh, have their opinion uh, without having to say, oh, what will they think about me if I, say, if I uh, tell this to them? So, so basically, so online review is a customer review uh, of a, after uh, the purchase products or a experience service. So there are basically two types of online review. The first is the positive uh, online review and the negative online review. So positive online review means when you are satisfied with any products or in any service, you give a positive feedback. So that is the positive review. And the negative online review means when you don't like any products or you don't like the service uh, a hotel or any service is providing, then you give the negative uh, online review. So in this, uh, in this uh, study, I'm gonna look at the negative online review only from the hotel's uh, perspective. And uh, why I chose to do this topic, because I saw, I read through lots of articles and I found out there are not much uh, articles up telling about how hotel handle the complaint or how, why, uh, why hotel think they are, the customer are complaining about it. And also they have lots of articles, lots of articles about uh, why customer is doing this, why customer uh, need to do it, but not for, why do you why hotel thing it is important and also there are lots of articles in the u.s market and also in other international markets but no any in the china or also in macau and also we are i'm going to talk about three main things that is the effect and the importance of the negative uh, negative online review in the hotel industry and the complaint handling process and also the management response and for the literature review, so first the importance of the negative online review. So first, a uh, negative online review can help the hotel know about their lacking factors from the customer's point of view. So when you are working in a hotel, you won't, you will be staying in the counter for eight or nine, nine hours. However, you won't go to the room or you won't experience the service. So when the customer uh, complain about something, you know uh, the point from the customers, from customers. And also negative online review give a chance to connect with the with the uh, customer. So okay, taking an example from a front office, uh, front desk. Uh, so when a guest check-ins and if there is no any problem, then you are gonna talk with the guest during the checkout. That is the only two point where you're gonna interact with the guest. So if there is any complaint or any reviews, then you will have more interaction with the guest and you will know more about the guest opinions and the management response and the complaint handling. So from one of the article from Sparks and Bradley, I found out there are a triple A typology for the management response handling. So it is the acknowledgement account and the action. So acknowledgement means uh, you see the uh, you see the comments and then you assure the guest that I have seen your comments, I will follow up. And then uh, and account means you actually uh, follow up, you tell the guest, uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry this happened and we will look forward. And then uh, action means, action means uh, you talk with the management and then uh, you've talked with the management and assure that that thing will not happen again. And uh, the ne if the negative review are handled properly, then the hotel can end up earning a loyal customer. So once uh, you uh, you contact the guest for the negative review, then they might feel like their uh, opinions have been valued. So they might think, oh, I also matter to this hotel. So they might uh, they might tend to be a loyal customer. And uh, for the methodology, I use the qualitative uh, study, and I have chosen two uh, um, two research. First one is the primary. Uh, I have used the semi-structured interview, so I interviewed uh, eight interviews from a specific hotel, and uh, the sampling technique used were the personal network, where I selected the interview that I knew already before, and the snowball uh, sampling, where uh, 
I asked the prior interviewee to let me know if they knew any other people of, uh, uh, who can help me with this study. And for the secondary research, I used the uh, review, uh, the complaint from the trip advisor. So uh, I source the data from June 2019 until December 2020. And so imperial findings. So first, look, let's look at the interview profile. So uh, of total eight, 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 eight interviews, there were uh, five male and three female interviews. And the average uh, age was 43. And the work average uh, work experience was 10 years. And the first, let's look at the online mom review monitoring. So all of these findings are from a one particular hotels. Um, so uh, so first, uh, when I asked them about how, when did they uh, started reviewing the uh, the uh, review, the online reviews? So they said uh, they have been looking for the online site from 2012. However, after after uh, when they started receiving lots of online uh, bookings and they started seeing that the online travel agents has been very increasingly popular they started paying closely attention to from 2015 and also they use the platforms like trip.com trip advisor agoda expedia and dingping and uh, they monitor the online reviews on the weekly basis so they do it on once a week that is on monday and also uh, in this hotel, the uh, online reviews are monitored by uh, front desk only. They don't have any different uh, department. And then next is the negative online review about the hotel. So when I asked uh, the hotel employees about the about what they think uh, the customer complaint must about the hotel, then they said me uh, they they think uh, facilities was the one of the weakest point for their hotel. And when I um, analyzed the data and collected the uh, the complaints uh, from the trip advisor, uh, the highest point was from the uh, facilities, followed by the service, decoration, and the price. And the next one is the uh, negative online review handling. So they have five main steps to handle the review. So first, uh, when uh, they they look at the online site and they will first do is find out the information in the hotel system. They will try to find out the duration, uh, stay duration period and their, uh, and their uh, names or which room number they have stayed in so that they can have more personal information about the guests. So that will be the second step. So they will find the uh, guest personal information and try to contact the guest personally and ask more details about the situation and why the guest, why the co guest uh, complained about it. And step three will be extending the apology. And step four will be discussing with the department. So once they extend the apology and maybe if the situation was too extreme, giving out the compensation, uh, they would uh, discuss it with the department. And uh, step five would be finding a, finding a way to solve the problem. And then, so next is a suggestion for online review management. So this one is from the hotel, what uh, from the hotel staff, what they can do within the hotel to improve their online review management. So first, uh, they would like to have a department solely focused on the online review handling. As right now, the, I, as I mentioned before, the, the online review are handled by the front desk. They do not have any other departments to handle it. So they would like to have another department solely focusing on that one. And also they would like to file uh, constructive review according to the issues. So right now they don't have any, uh, any um, methods or any uh, process to see what are the what are the categories or what are the uh, issues they are having more complaint about. So they would like to have those kind of uh, issues in a category. Second, they would like to analyze the data frequently. So right now they just analyze it once a week. So they would like to do it more often. And also they would like to train all the uh, staff to handle the reviews. So right now uh, the, uh, the reviews are mostly handled by the administrative uh, staff of the front desk. And uh, when the when there are not much staff, then they just skip the uh, review handling process. So if if there are not much staff in this week, so they will just skip it. So never, so they would like to train other staff as well, so they can handle it more often. And for the discussion, 
So impact of the positive and the negative review. So one of the article I found out claimed that claims that some of the positive review are more influential and some says that negative uh, review are influential. For, but from what, from the finding, I, I got that the negative review has been more uh, more influential in the in the purchase decision and also uh, talking more about the clearly and accurately about the product. And next, the effect of the customer complaint. Uh, so uh, this one, the article says that the customer uh, complaint can be in advantage uh, for the uh, company. And also from the finding as well, I found out that the uh, complaint can be temporarily bad for the hotel. However, if you look at the long-term point, then it can help in the development and the improvement of the hotel. And next, uh, for the conclusion, so so the, I have come with the three conclusions. So first, uh, negative online review is a very important uh, factor uh, in the hotel industry. So uh, there is no way that we can omit uh, omit the uh, negative online reviews. So because Macau invites the guests from all over the world, so there are going to be lots of cultural difference. There are going to be lots of thinking difference. So there is no way we will be able to uh, we will be able to uh, fulfill the desire of the, the our satisfy all kind of guests so we need to we need to take the online of uh, the negative uh, review as a as a point and then try to improve it and then for the second point negative review should be handled uh, on time with positive attitude so if the negative reviews are ignored and not handled so the customer might feel like they are not valued and their opinion are not important to the hotel so they might they might not be uh, willing to come back to the same hotel again and third conclusion is that all the staff should know how to handle the complaints like i told before and so some limitations and the suggestion. So for this, uh, for this uh, study, I just chose uh, one specific hotel. So I couldn't, f I couldn't uh, find much of uh, details from that uh, hotel. So for the future uh, researchers, I would like to suggest them to choose different hotels with the different categories, like three star, four star hotels. And also for the selection of the online platform, I chose the tip advisor to look at the comments of the, the co complaints of the guest. However, I, I would suggest the future researchers to look at the uh, look at the platform that is popular in the designed area, like in Macau, in China, trips.com is more popular. So, uh, however, and also because of the COVID, there are no international uh, tourists and trip advisor is more famous for the international hotel, uh, international guests. So right now I couldn't find much of the information. So that does my two uh, limitations. And that is all for the presentation. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Sanaha. And uh, you have demonstrated a very important uh, topic because nowadays the online uh, word, of no uh, word of mouth is really uh, influential, huh? And um, now uh, we would like to uh, seek for the questions and the comments from our panel members. Hi, Sneha. Good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation. It's it's very important, like you said. Uh, so negative negative comments are really important to handle correctly and in time. And you mentioned all that on your presentation. Um, what I didn't got very much is your personal feeling. Um, when when you go through those steps that this specific hotel is doing, do you agree with them? Do I like the uh, <laughs> complaint handling process? Yeah. Do you agree with them? Do you think they are the right way of doing things, or do you have a better option? Uh, I think they are right in some extent, because uh, to be honest, uh, I I like it. Like uh, con uh, contacting the guest, extending the apology, if, uh, giving some compensation if the situation too. I think it's good, but uh, for me, I feel like this step is too rehearsed. And I think it's very, uh, it's very common because you see this step everywhere. So everywhere, everyone is like, okay, if you, someone complains, you're gonna do it, just extend the apology. If they don't like the apology, just give them something. So I think, uh, so I, think uh, I would like to have a new approach to it. Like, I can't say exactly what, but uh, maybe they can have more personal touch to it. That's what I would like to say. That I think <laughs> is something that is missing there. I think you should have mm. your own opinion say, hey, I, 
I agree with these steps, but I would like to see more, again, personal touch, whatever you think. I think it would be good for us to know you, what you felt because you have studied this and you've went to, through all this process. The other thing mm -hmm. you said is that the negative online gives you a chance to connect with a customer. Um, and you said another thing that during checkout, you're just checking out the guests. You, you're not, you don't connect with the customer. I, I think on the, on the hospital, being on hospitality for many years, I think you should think the opposite. Of course, it gives you a, 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 a chance to connect with the customer, but it's, it's not because of a good reason. <laughs> so you should for sure uh, train the team and get the team ready to connect with the guest when the guest is on the hotel, on property. Uh, I, I always say, if we know that the guest has an issue within the property, don't let it, don't let the guest leave the property mm -hmm. with that issue being, being unsolved, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how we should focus. We should focus on making sure that we have the minimum negative comments possible because we have actually g given all the, all the, all the, um, all the tools to the team, like you said, to handling the complaint properly and making sure that the guest uh, leaves the property um, happy, right? And we solve the issue and, they are, and the team is empowered to take care of the guest's issue. So I, that's the only thing I really don't agree on, on, your, on your presentation, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Snen Snenya. Snenya. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think this is definitely a very interesting topic, particularly in the hotel industry. And I totally agree with you in regards to the uh, insights as to how if we are able to regain, uh, handle a uh, guest negative review well, we are able to regain the loyalty of the customer. Definitely is very important. I think you have already, uh, you know, um, mentioned in your presentation about the limitation of this uh, uh, paper is uh, indeed the sample size because of the eight interviews and also one company which may not be able to give a full perspective and I think there is definitely a, a lot of opportunities here especially you mentioned that uh, a lot of uh, papers are actually referring to the international market so it will be very interesting in the future if you uh, can dig into this deeper, particularly for the Asian market, and it, which I believe will be very valuable for the hotel industry. So two questions which you might want to uh, put into your future study. Uh, number one is really uh, when you have a bigger sample size, what are the best practices, especially how different luxury hotels go above and beyond to really regain the loyalty and in fact, I myself personally has the testimony of how uh, I'm a complaint guest. And eventually when the brand were able to regain the loyalty, I become a waving fans for the brand itself. So I experienced that myself as well. So it'll be very interesting to know what are the best practices and how hotel actually uh, managed to do it. And the second point will be, uh, I totally agree with Mr. Motella Rowe mentioned. Uh, it is really important, not just about when the guest has left the hotel, but it's really about uh, how we collect the feedbacks proactively during the stay at different point in time and also how uh, it is being handled. So it will be interested, interesting to know how different uh, luxury hotels in this uh, area of this market handle this as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Selena. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, it's very interesting. And uh, apart from our panel members uh, comment. I will say, uh, I personally, I feel your subject is a little bit diverted into a complaint handling rather than the uh, negative online review and management response. I will expect uh, as the very beginning of your uh, PPT, uh, I do agree that the uh, nowadays the yi wom, the new terms that what I learned this morning, <laughs> is very is a very powerful. Okay, it's a pair of uh, very powerful tools. No matter it's a good side or bad side, you can make it, you can make a bad side, you can make a negative comment into a good side, become a compliment, as you ma I just mentioned before. And the, um, I will expect your, your, in your presentation is then talking about, say, uh, how a business or how hotel to respond or handle with this online review. Rather than okay, you focusing on the, uh, I'll, I'll talk to the guests, I'll, I'll, I'll investigate, or that's that's that kind of uh, a procedure is uh, quite relate to the 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 actual the complaint handling. Okay, oh, and the 
I do agree with you that your limitation for your data collection is because you only got the uh, eight response, right? You, you just interview eight. Yes. Okay. So it's uh, limited your study mm -hmm. and your research. And for your future study, I was I would suggest that you you should collect um a more widely, no matter is a hotel or hotel industry, or or customer service industry, it will, it will make you a more idea of it. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for our uh, panel members' valuable comments. So now uh, we would like to, um, yeah, we, we have the third presenter, Mr. Uh, Ms. Cindy Zhao. Cindy, you will have 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cindy Zhao, and my uh, presentation topic is Young People Perception of Key Entrepreneurship Methods, Evaluation of Effectuation Principle. So first of all, is the outline of my presentation. And I would like to give you a little bit introduction about my uh, background information. Uh, that's the reason why I want to study this topic. First of all, uh, entrepreneurship can be the beneficial for both society and the individual for society. Uh, it can simulate the economy activity and then advise, uh, about as uh, providing more job to the society. And then for individual, it can uh, fulfill personal goals and then uh, attend personal developments. Uh, for young people, they are greatly encouraged to start their own business because they are the master of the future and they are the main state for innovation. But however, according to the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor with a GEM report, they say that young people are less likely to start their own businesses. Uh, for young entrepreneurship, um, there's lots of opinions about this. Some people think that uh, they face a lot of challenge because they are lack of resource, lack of experience, and they are uh, there. Some some people even doubt their capability to overcome the constraint in the business startup. But however, some people argue that they have their own advantage, uh, such as they uh, suffered less uh, pressure from the family. They have less responsibility, and then uh, they are more innovative and they are more adaptive to new ideas. Even though they fail, they can they still have a long way to go. And to find a suitable methods for the entrepreneurship can be the catalyst for uh, to incur, uh, for the entrepreneurship activity. And effectuation is a very important uh, entrepreneurial methods applied in the entrepreneurship. And it's also uh, very commonly used by the uh, experienced entrepreneurs. For the situation in Macau, as we all know that Macau is a tourism city and it's very famous for a tourism industry. But because of this, it had a high reliance of this, uh, of this tourism industry. So uh, it suffered a great impact of the COVID-19, uh, manifested in the high unemployment rate, and the graduate students are hard to find job. Uh, for this reason, uh, young people are in, um, I encourage it to start their own business. And meanwhile, the Macau government also uh, encouraged more people to start their own business because um, uh, they want to like uh, refresh the, the business industry. So uh, I think that is a good opportunity for young people to start a business in Macau. So uh, for the literature, I will give you a little bit concept about uh, what I've used in my research. First of all, it's the effectuation. It's the utilization of means on hand to create a possible outcome. While the traditional matter is causation, which is you set up a goal and then you owe all the means to achieve that kind of goal. Uh, for nascent entrepreneurs, um, we I, I adopt this concept here because uh, it's quite similar to young entrepreneur because they are all novice to the market. And we studied the nascent entrepreneurship in order to um, better help understand the young entrepreneurship. And here I give more information about the effectuation. According to uh, Saravasti and Duke's study, they designed a dynamic model to explain more about the effectuation process. First of all, they will start by asking three questions, who I am, what I know, and whom I know. 
in order to uh, have a self evaluation and then they can know what they can do in the business startup. After the uh, self evaluation, they can interact with other people and form a partnership in order to find out some new means of new goal to continue for their business startup. So uh, by using the dynamic models, um, entrepreneurs are able to use the means on hand to find the expected outcome. Uh, uh, based on the period uh, literature, I find some point to support about the effectuation is suitable for young entrepreneurship. So first of all, uh, the effectuation starts on the, with the mean on hand, so it doesn't uh, depend on the capability and the experience of the entrepreneur. And uh, for the entrepreneur, uh, nascent entrepreneur, they have a better performance by applying effectuation than causation. And uh, effectuation uh, performed well in the earlier stage of the new venture creation and the key innovation process because uh, they can better cater to the situation of limited resource and, and the uncertain market. And effectuation is proved to be related to the proactive of the uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, based on the dynamic model, we can see that <coughs> the flexibility of effectuation is better, uh, is more beneficial to, uh, to the business startup. And under the effectuation, there are five principles. First of all, it's a bird in hand, and it's at the beginning process of the process. Uh, you can have a self-evaluation and then you can know what to do by this, uh, the burden hand principle. And for affordable laws, you can set uh, uh, the largest law, laws you can support. And then the, for the lemonade, is it more about a flexible mindset. Um, the contingency and uncertainty can be the constraint for entrepreneur, but also can be the opportunity for them. And for crazy quote, um, People can like interact, uh, yeah, entrepreneur can interact with other people and then to build a partnership to expand their resources. For pilot in the plane, because of the diversity of the market, so uh, some people may would like to be the creator of the leader of the new market instead of following the trends. So based on the background information and the literature, I, um, wrote some uh, research objective, which is to find out young people's perception of the key entrepreneurial method effectuation. And to, in order to estimate that their attitude toward entrepreneurship. So here I raised four uh, research uh, questions. First one is to find out two of the most important uh, effectuation principle for young people, for young people, and then how they perceive these two principles work in a business startup. And then how the result reflect about the uh, effectuation and young entrepreneurship. So for the research matters, first, first of all, uh, the data were collected by the lecturer of the uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, student would ask to write down two of the most important effectuation principle on the exam paper with recent given. And so it, this research, we adopted the qualitative method and 164 students from IFTM they, uh, they have finished the uh, uh, entrepreneurship course. They are mostly a year four student and from culinary and tourism and hotel program. And for the data analysis, analysis here we adopt the thematic methods. Oh, sorry. Um, for the results, we can see that uh, bird in hand and crazy quote are two of the most important uh, effectuation principle. Uh, in the eyes of the young people. And based on uh, the reason given by the student, uh, we categorize uh, the reason and conclude it into several different themes. So you can see for burden hand, a majority of students, they believe that the, uh, the burden hand can help them to have a self recognition, to know them so well, and to know the weakness and the uh, uh, advantage of them style and even know the motivation for business startup. And then for uh, uh, 39 people, uh, they think that burden help help them to find the direction. After they have a self evaluation, they can uh, make up for the limitation of know what to do next. And also some students mentioned about the condition of the young and nascent entrepreneurs. 
basically, there are some shortcoming of them, like a lack of experience, lack of resources. And for affordable laws, um, most students believe that um, they chose affordable law because of the condition of young uh, or nascent entrepreneur. Uh, basically, are the shortcoming uh, like the limited uh, resources. And then the second and third point can be combined into one thing, which is the extent of law can be afforded and minimize the loss, which is uh, they think that they can know how worse it can be and they can get prepared for it. So uh, in the result, you can minimize the losses. And for lemonade, they chose this reason because um, they believe that as it has changed the mindset and attitude, they more emphasis on the mentality and attitude. Like they think that uh, young people should hope a positive attitude for the business startup. And it also helped to discover the opportunity. Um, they think that the lemonade is a, is such, can help them to turn uh, the uncertainty into opportunity. And the third one is also under the theme of change of mindset and attitude, but this point more empathy on embracing the mythic and failure. They believe that uh, uh, it's normal to have a uh, mistake and failure, but the important thing is to learn from it. For crazy quotes, uh, they, uh, most of the students believe that partners are very essential for business startup because uh, they emphasize on the function of partnership, like teamwork is important and they can get advice and network attention from this process. Um, then the students believe that the conviction of young and nascent entrepreneurs, which are uh, focused more on the experience and uh, resources limitation, is the reason that they choose Crazy Quill. And then they think that uh, Crazy, Quill, Crazy Quill is also uh, important too for them to have uh, to have some financial support. And for pilot in the plane, some students ch uh, chose it as an important. Uh, principle because that they think young people should not try to follow the trend they, uh, because it's a lead innovation for them and uh, there's no difference with others. They believe that young people should aim to be the leader, to be the creator because it's more motivated for their business startup and they are more free. They should control about their future. So for the discussion section, we are going to answer the research question we have. First of all is how did uh, uh, we know from the result that burden in hand and credit quote are two of the most important effectuation principles. And for burden in hand, they can know themselves before startup and design the following direction. Um, so people are able to uh, uh, align with the previous study of Sarah Vasley and the other scholar. And for credit quote, it can it provide uh, the function of partnership, like teamwork, network, and experience sharing is very important that it can provide. And it's also a tool for restoral extension, which also align with the uh, previous study of Saravasti. And how do these results reflect about e effectuation? So um, we can know that the reason for them to do effectuation. First of all, we can notice that uh, from the result that many people wrote, wrote about the shortcoming of young and nascent entrepreneurs, which is lack of experience, lack of resources. Um, and then from the other two principles, we can know that young people uh, want to take more control over their business. So that's a basically, basically it's the reason that why people want to choose effectuation. And uh, even though uh, effectuation, uh, even though burden hand and credit quote are two of the most effectuation, most important effectuation chose by students. But the other um, principle is also important, but just uh, but they just focus on the function of evaluating on what in on hand and forming a partnership. So how did the result reflect about young entrepreneurship? It's that uh, young people pay more attention to the means on hand and network intention. intention. But from the result, we also can infer that they care about their resource mode in the business startup. So here we uh, give several suggestions for the business start uh, for the entrepreneurial education. First of all, effectuation is suitable for young entrepreneurs. So we should promote more about the effectuation matters to encourage more young people to start a business. And then we can raise more awareness of the other effectuation principle. And think that resort is very important for young, young people. We can provide tuition about exploring and expanding resources. 
and we can make a application a platform for uh, experience sharing and network building thing that many young people think they are lack of experience. And for conclusion, we can know that uh, this, uh, this, uh, this study contributes to the, uh, to explore young people's percep perception towards uh, entre young entrepreneurship and effectuation is suitable for young people. They care about uh, what they have, their partner and what they want to do and their conviction. And resource is very important for young people. So for the limitation and further research is here. And the first point on limitation is that uh, the sample is too small that it cannot represent all the young people in Macau. And it's hard to distinguish the roles who answer the question that the answer of a student of the answer of, of a young entrepreneur may be different. So for the further research, I think that we can make some comparative work like uh, to ask students from different school or different, uh, or they, some of them may have graduated from the school. So they may have different perception of young entrepreneurship. So that's basically all of my presentation. And here's the reference. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy, for this interesting and informative presentation. So I would like to uh, seek for the comments from the panel members. Um, I'll say uh, thank you very much, Cindy, for your presentation. I'll say you are very confident and very, very you present very confident and very well prepared and uh, I'll say it's very it's a hard work for you to collect your data 164 yeah. respond with a qualitative rate right? uh yes yeah, qualitative. how long have how long have you been collect your for, um, for you to take the collect the data actually uh, as I say there was my uh the lecture of uh, entrepreneurship the course uh he provided data to me because it's it right uh, written on the exam paper is it a, uh, from the exam answership? So I just collect this data and then uh, like analyze this. Ah, I see, I yeah. see. Okay, it's very innovative. Nothing much for me, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Hi, Cindy. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it's very interesting to know about this topic, especially on evacuation principles. Uh, very interesting to know about the principles of it. Uh, I have a question. I'm not sure if I have missed it during your presentation just now. Since you have already interviewed and uh, or surveyed uh, over 100 students from mm -hmm. IFTM and yeah. across three major, yeah. it will be very interesting to know. I'm not sure if it was already on your finding is how many percent of the IFT students graduates uh, would be interested to do a startup? Do you have that data? after they graduate, I mean, for your current batch, uh -huh. how many percentage of the students who are graduating will be interested to do a startup? Do you have that data? Uh, no, okay. because, yeah, All uh, right. I have an interview for them person in person because the data were uh, written in the answership. So I haven't did an interview to ask them oh, up for their opinions. Understand. It yeah. will be interesting to for industry uh, to know as well how yeah. percent of the students actually decided that they want to do their own business. It will be very interesting to know. Another thing that I think uh, it will be very helpful for the government and also for the industry as well, especially we are very good partners to IFTM, mm -hmm. will be how we can support the students if they would really want to dare to dream. So um, how we can support them to be able to dream for their business. I'm sure that there will be some synergies that the industry and the government as well to be able mm -hmm. to do uh, to support the students in this regard so yeah. that we can all promote Macau as a, a tourism um, destinations for the guests. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hi, Cindy, are you okay? Yeah. Last one, <laughs> last one to present is always tougher, right? Yeah, I'm so nervous. I know, I know, I know, I know it is. Um, but I think it was a very interesting team. Uh, I was very excited to come and, and, and listen to you, your presentation, because yeah. it was a team that I was not very familiar with. Mm. Um, and you started very well, but then I got a little bit lost, I need to tell you. When mm. you were trying to, to explain us uh, the burden hand, the crazy quilt and the lemonade, and what was the difference between them, I, I got lost, <laughs> oh, <laughs> to be very honest. Yeah. Uh, so I, I got, I lost a little bit of my interest about the subject which was so interesting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And again, I think we, one of the things that actually Joyce just mentioned, 
and I don't, I, I didn't, I don't think you mentioned very well. You mentioned in the beginning saying that the government can support, right, and the family can support. That's yeah. Exactly what you was saying. You have all these new programs, even in China, everywhere, all these think tank programs that think about into the, um, um, uh, how, how we can build your own business. How can you start your own business? That mm -hmm. you didn't mention that either, right? And again, I said I, I myself personally got lost on this, on this um, uh, yeah. different areas, <laughs> uh -huh. and I, I didn't understand the difference between them very well. Mm. Um, so I don't know. If, uh, perhaps my point would be for you, perhaps to explain them a little bit better, take more time. And I think you were very nervous. I yeah. think uh, uh, so. You just relax. I, I know it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. Just relax. Try to explain them, and also perhaps when you had those points. When you're talking about them individually, perhaps just take the three main issues instead of having to perhaps put a graphic and talk a little bit about them a little mm -hmm. bit more. For the for the persons like me that were not very familiar with the team, would understand better the difference between them and not to to kind of, that's that's my feedback. Yeah, thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for our panel members. Uh, valuable comments. I believe our students uh, has been benefited a lot for their future improvement. Thank you. So um, I'm sure that uh, you will uh, all agree that this has been a very fruitful section, right? Last but not the least, I would like to uh, present the certificates to our students as well as the uh, souvenirs to our panel members. Thank you.